A kidney health danger may be hiding in your bathroom cabinet and in your pantry. This synthetic vitamin is linked to high blood pressure, osteoporosis, cardiac risk, and kidney damage. Are you taking dangerous synthetic vitamins? Catherine here, as the global vitamin market is expected to almost double its size in the next 7 years, experts are always more concerned about the unwanted effects of certain supplements. Some everyday use vitamins are now linked to a long list of possible health issues, including an increased risk of dying of any cause. And as usual, unfortunately, people with kidney disease are way more at risk than the general population. Those with impaired kidney function cannot properly dispose of excess vitamins from supplements, and this may make things worse. Okay guys, if you follow me here regularly, you probably already know that you need to be careful with many supplements and vitamins in particular should be always treated with cautions. Today we talk about one hidden danger not many people are aware of that presented by synthetic vitamins. Vitamins in supplements come in different forms and they don't always have the same effect inside the body. For example, you can supplement vitamin C as ascorbic acid or sodium ascorbate. They are both vitamin C, but they are not the same. So it's time now to double check all of our vitamin supplements and make sure they don't contain the four dangerous synthetic vitamins of this video. Starting with number one, this everyday use vitamin might be literally making you sick. Studies have linked it to a significantly increased blood pressure. It may even increase the risk for stroke and cancer. Other research says it can even lead to bone loss, raise cholesterol levels, and kidney damage. Sadly, this vitamin is still being manufactured. I'm talking about alpha tocopherol, which is a synthetic form of vitamin E. This dangerous vitamin is everywhere. Please look in all your supplements and nutrient-dense powders, drinks, and foods. This form of vitamin E was supposed to have long lists of health benefits. People still take it for its supposed skin health benefits. Some people even use it for kidney health because it's supposed to be a powerful antioxidant. And high-potency antioxidants are one of the most promising advancements in the treatment of kidney disease, but not from alpha tocopherol. This synthetic vitamin is dangerous. Make sure you are not supplementing it. In short, don't supplement vitamin E unless explicitly prescribed by your doctor. Alpha tocopherol, the synthetic version of vitamin E, seems to be especially dangerous. To avoid it, check your supplements for DL alpha tocopherol and also alpha tocopherol. These should be labeled as DI alpha tocopherol DL, indicating that it's a synthetic form. But some brands label it as just alpha tocopherol. Be careful with any supplement containing this vitamin, especially at high doses. The alpha tocopherol is the natural form and is supposed to be safer, but it's actually not recommended to supplement that either if you have CKD. Now guys, our next entry is a vitamin that can actually turn into poison in the body. This is a vitamin that is usually recommended for people with CKD, making it even more dangerous. We will make sure you are taking the right form in a moment. Before we see it, an even more important question needs an answer. Are vitamins from foods different from what you get from supplements? 
Even though they are often called natural, most vitamins in supplements are isolated substances that come from several, often non-foods, sources. The L-alpha tocopherol or synthetic vitamin E is an example. While supplement brands could manufacture vitamin E from actual foods, they often choose to make it from petroleum derivatives so they can save money. This is how the L-alpha tocopherol is made. Now, this does not mean that non-food vitamins do not have any value. They clearly do, especially for those with kidney problems. Taking certain vitamins is a must. Vitamin deficiencies are way too common to rely on food intake alone and supplements make a difference. But it is important to understand that vitamins from foods have actually been shown to be better than isolated non-food vitamins. Yes, I know this may seem strange at first, but vitamins from foods don't always have the same effect on the body as vitamins from supplements. A very good example is vitamin E itself. Now, the thing about vitamin E is that it seems to be good for the kidneys, but with a huge caveat. An increased intake of vitamin E from foods, not from supplements, seems to be beneficial for people with kidney disease. Now, if you want to know more about what foods contain the natural healthy form of vitamin E and many other healthy vitamins, my video up here is for you. The link is, as usual, also down in description. So you can finish watching today's video now and watch the other video later. And guys, remember that you can also leave a like if you want and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Time now to see what synthetic vitamin may actually turn into poison. According to a recent study, if you take the wrong form of this vitamin, you may actually be at risk of cyanide toxicity. Number two, cyanocobalamin, the synthetic form of B12. Talking about B12, there are mainly two forms you could be taking from supplements methylcobalamin and cyanocobalamin. Cyanocobalamin is a synthetic form found only in supplements. Methylcobalamin, on the other hand, is a natural occurring form that you can get through either food sources or supplements. Okay, I think you get where I'm going with this, right? Cyanocobalamin, as the name suggests, contains small amounts of cyanide. But cyanocobalamin is not usually dangerous unless you have a reduced GFR. Here is what the recent study says about this. Metabolism of high doses of cyanocobalamin may generate small amounts of cyanide for which clearance may be reduced and this may cause a faster decline in GFR. Yup, in someone with reduced GFR, taking cyanocobalamin may be linked to damage to the kidneys. In short, be very careful with vitamin B12, double check that any supplement you may be taking contains methylcobalamin and not cyanocobalamin. Consider that this vitamin is not well absorbed by the body, so supplement manufacturers usually pack huge amounts of synthetic B12 to overcome this issue, even 100 times the RDI. Be careful and double check your labels. However, remember that vitamin B12 is essential for your health and that you can only get it from supplements if you are following a renal diet. Don't risk a B12 deficiency because it can lead to several dangerous symptoms including weakness and depression. Untreated, this deficiency may also lead to elevated homocysteine, vascular disease and anemia. This brings us to the next dangerous synthetic vitamin. Number three, folic acid. Folic acid is a synthetic form of vitamin B9 that is commonly used in supplements and fortified foods. However, excessive intake of folic acid, particularly in supplement form, may mask vitamin B12 deficiency. And this can potentially lead to several health issues, including anemia, as we have seen. And there is also some evidence to suggest that high doses of folic acid may be directly harmful. Excess folic acid may build up in the body and may contribute to cardiovascular problems. This is, however, still debated. 
You see, folic acid is actually not just safe to supplement in the right amount, but also recommended for those with CKD. In short, when supplementing folic acid, make sure you are getting the right amount. Question, should you take folate or folic acid? You see, you usually can't get folate, the active form of vitamin B9, from supplements, only from foods. Now, the problem with supplementing folic acid, synthetic form of B9, is that not all this nutrient is converted to the active form, folate. However, it is still debated if this unconverted vitamin may actually cause problems other than masking of B12 deficiency. So always also supplement B12 and also B6 when supplementing B9. B6 is known to help converting folic acid into folate in the body. But obviously, you should also aim to get this vitamin from foods since the natural form is better absorbed and healthier. So what foods contain folate? Dark leafy greens such as spinach, kale, and arugula are some examples of greens that are high in folate and great for a renal diet. Asparagus are also great. A half cup or 90 grams per serving of cooked asparagus contains about 134 micrograms of folate or 34% of the DV. Broccoli are also super healthy. Remember that to get the most benefits from these foods, it's best to eat them raw or lightly cooked to preserve their folic content. All of these foods also come with a ton of other health benefits that synthetic vitamins won't give you. Now, there is one more synthetic vitamin that's even more dangerous than everything we have seen until now, even worse than synthetic vitamin E. This is a vitamin you should never supplement. It may cause kidney damage even in the amount you find in multivitamins. Number four is retinyl palmitate or synthetic vitamin A. Synthetic forms of vitamin A, including retinol and retinyl palmitate, are often used in supplements, especially multivitamins. But this synthetic vitamin can accumulate in the body and may be toxic in excessive amounts, leading to potential adverse effects such as birth defects, liver toxicity, and other health issues, including kidney damage. And as I was saying, you can get vitamin A in the wrong form from the most common multivitamins. You know, those you can buy in most supermarkets or general stores. I'm talking about your run-of-the-mill centrum or your smarty pants or your super dean if you are in Europe. Okay, none of this is safe if you have a reduced GFR. The reason is the presence of certain vitamins, vitamin A in particular, that are not safe for people in any stage of CKD. And while the synthetic form of vitamin A, retinyl palmitate, appears to be the most dangerous, vitamin A from supplement is never considered safe for people with reduced kidney function. Now guys, today we have seen what you should not supplement. But there are vitamins that, on the other hand, people with kidney disease are actually recommended to supplement. If you want to know more about what to supplement, please watch my video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.